Hello, Ace community, and welcome back to Office Hours. My name is Mandy Balick, founder of Ace, and it's been a while. We're just getting back from summer and getting our, you know, getting our shit together back to fall. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but September always feels like kind of that January 1st. Um, and we're approaching the last 90 days of the year. So uh, really excited to be back. And we have an incredible next season of Office Hours with some amazing women in our community. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're talking with Kristen Dick. Kristen is one of our business members. She's the founder of Avro Creative, and she is all about helping women find their personal brand and own their personal brand. So really excited to have you here. Thanks, Maddie. Kristen has one of the best, like, of course, this is what she does for work, so of course she does, but every time I hear her say her, you know, her elevator pitch that we all are so terrified to say, she kills it. So can we just get that out of the way right now? Can you just tell us yes. who you are and what you do? Absolutely, so I call it a personal brand statement. I love that, that sounds way better. Cool. But it's not like in university when it's like, yeah. We're yeah. Kind of like, okay, personal brand statement. Yes. So what I do, so my name is Kristen, I'm a personal brand strategist. What that means is that I get to work with ambitious women to help them reach their goals using a unique personal branding process that I created. Right? Sign up. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I, it's obviously, it takes a long time to craft a message like that that you feel confident in. And I know so many women uh, struggle with that. Um, personally, you know, at ACE and in our community, we hear that all the time. Um, but I want to hear from you what, you know, if you had to describe your personal brand in three words, mm -hmm. what would that be? Mm -hmm. So freedom is a really big brand attribute for me. I believe in all women should have freedom to let their true selves shine. And so that's a big part of my process is creating space and encouragement for women to be able to do that. And it's authenticity. And I, I've started to hate that word, but it's, it's just so overused. But really, do you and do it well. And I call it personal branding from the inside out. Mm. And that's a big mantra for my brand. Um, it took me a long time to be okay with being myself mm -hmm. and put my best foot forward and own who I am. And now that's a big part of what I do through my personal brand is helping others do the same. Cool. Okay, so freedom, authenticity, and what was the last one? Um, personal branding from the inside out. From the inside out. Instead okay. of the word authenticity. Okay, I like that. No, I like that. I'm with you on that. So, um, you were once told, and I, I loved hearing this story again the other day, but that you do great work, but nobody knows who you are. Mm -hmm. So that's got to be like pretty tough feedback to get, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yes. When someone says, hey, no one knows who you are. Like, ugh. Um, oh, it, was, it was. But I'm sure that really impacted, you know, what you've now created and how you support and show up for other women. Um, why do you think it's important to establish a personal brand? And like, how did that statement get you here? Mm -hmm. Well, hearing that feedback from my boss at the time, it was a really pivotal point in my career. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it's, it really speaks to the power of clear, direct feedback too and really owning that. I could have made a choice that day to ignore it, but I took that choice to really own it, to own myself and my actions at that point. And so um, what it did for me was change everything. I realized I worked too hard to sit back and let life and my career pass me by and wait for things to come my way because that's what I thought mm. you know, the world worked. That's how I thought it worked. Um, but really I learned that opportunities are what you create, mm -hmm. right? And so I, having a personal brand allows you to create opportunities. It allows you to be ready for them. Mm. And that personal brand statement thing that you mentioned, what, what, isn't, what is often not said about it is it, and why it's so powerful is it, it frees up so much mental space. Mm -hmm. Like I'm coming here today, I know you're gonna ask me what I do. When I go speak at an event tomorrow, I have to introduce myself before mm -hmm. I just give my presentation. When I go to an event, people are gonna ask what I do. So, yeah. Rather than be worked up and nervous about it, yeah. I just can deliver it, right? Right, And then it frees up so much more mental space and energy to do my work and to have a great conversation with you. Totally. So it, personal branding, it, it does, it just, it impacts you in ways that you don't even realize and it gives you so much clarity mm -hmm. because you know who you are, you know what you need to tell people in order to build trust with them. Mm -hmm. That's the key thing with personal branding, it's trust. That's why you need to have a brand. Yeah. Um, and then it, there's all these really nice ripple effects, like yeah. the one I just mentioned, freeing yeah. up that mental space. 
I love that being prepared will give you the confidence because mm -hmm. um, you're right. Like if you're going to a networking event, if you're going to meet anyone, they're going to say, oh, who are you? What do you do? Like you're, mm -hmm. if that's weighing on your mind and that fear is showing up for you, you're not going to be able to show up as yourself. So I love the yes. idea of just taking your time to craft your message, hone in on that, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you can focus on more important things. That's right. right? Okay, so I want to just stay here for a second and tell me what the first step you did after you heard that feedback. Like, what was the first next step for you after that? It was self-reflection, and it was looking at where I am right now and where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. I was too afraid to put solid goals and to vocalize them to myself and then to start vocalizing them to other people. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a misstep for a lot of people and a lot of the women that I talk to. Sometimes they don't want to um, own a goal, that they have a goal with themselves, but a lot of them, they do have these goals and they have clarity with themselves as to what they are, but they aren't vocalizing them to other people. Mm -hmm. So your boss and her boss and the leadership team and your colleagues should know mm -hmm. what your goals are. Mm -hmm. People who are clients of your company, of your business, if you're an entrepreneur, people should understand your vision and where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that. So self-reflection and then speaking up and sharing uh, so that people know what you're working towards. Yeah. Great way to get noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a ton of information on what personal branding is, and you have touched on why it's important, but could you break it down a little into the steps that you need uh, to take it seriously? So there's a lot of steps and one of the misconceptions that I think is people jump to social media right away mm. and that might be one of the first steps. But when I work with people, that's actually the last thing we do is we get to social media. Yeah. So what you want to do is that goal setting piece, you want to build a brand to get you to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And so you need to get clear on where do you want to be in your career, in your business in five years from now, in 20 years from now, what's your grand vision for yourself? and then we can work backwards. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So you wanna have a statement for yourself. Okay. Uh, stories are really, really powerful, especially if you have a business or businesses. Yeah. You wanna have a story that, and the story is the bridge between you and your business. Right. It tells your why. Uh -huh. Then you wanna have similar, so I have a background in marketing, communications, and brand. So you almost wanna have a communications plan for yourself. Right. Steps to help you get to where you want to go, key messages, mm -hmm. things like that. And then start looking at your social media mm -hmm. and the other touch points that you have for your brand. So social media is awesome. It's so powerful that you can reach so many people. But what about those in-person interactions mm -hmm. and touch points? Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you are well prepared Absolutely. for those two. And that it's consistent, right? Absolutely. So when you can show up and ha engage in a conversation or the way that you introduce yourself, your first impression, and then when someone, you know, digs in and wants to look into you a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know, are they on your LinkedIn profile? What does it say there? Are they on your company website about what does it say there? Uh, and then if they land on your Instagram or your social media pages, what are you mm -hmm. wearing? And does that line up? So there's so exactly. much to think about. Wow. It's such yeah. an experience. So, um, I love hearing a little bit more about that and connecting that because yeah, it, I mean, optically, you might be like, oh, my, you know, what does my social feed look like? But mm. it's so much more yes. than that. Yeah. You work with ambitious women to help them achieve their goals. Why is working with women mm -hmm. important to you? And, you know, why did you choose to focus on women specifically? Mm -hmm. So helping women is just, it's hugely important to me. It's a huge value of mine. In my career and my experience, I was really fortunate early on to have really strong female leadership. Mm -hmm. But I would talk to my girlfriends in Calgary and beyond and hear them talk about there aren't women in the, on the leadership team, period, in my organization. Or my friends who are women of color would say, maybe there's one woman, but there isn't a woman that looks like me there. Mm -hmm. And I think we're really, really missing something there. You know, the future is, there's so much uncertainty. Mm -hmm. But one thing that we can have as a competitive advantage, you know, looking at our economy in Canada is diversity. Mm -hmm. And one element of diversity is gender diversity. And that's one thing that I can help with is to help boost the careers of women who are professionals and small business owners so that we have more women running companies in Canada, so that we have more women leading their organizations here in our country. Um, and helping women let their true selves shine is a part mm -hmm. of that. That's just about showing them how to own their voice. Like you're not yes. doing anything with their credentials, their education. 
you are literally just supporting them how they talk about themselves. Yes. They've already got it. They've already got it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just talking about it, communicating their value. Mm -hmm. Ladies, we got to own this shit. Um, (laughs) A lot of women struggle with owning their brand because they don't want to appear as if they're bragging or shining too bright. Uh, What's your advice Mm -hmm. around that? Mm -hmm. That's a tough one. You know, we hear this a lot that this, if I say this, will people think this of me? And this is something I had to overcome as well. Um, I shared a post at a blog just recently about how once I started communicating my brand within my organization, the brand that I rebranded and relaunched brought in huge revenue, 122% over nine months Wow! in, uh, in this really short season. And so I talk about how if I hadn't spoken up and talked about my value and wasn't complacent, I talk, said, this is what I could be doing for you, and I was given that opportunity, mm-hmm. that wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. So get over the idea that you're bragging, start talking about how you can contribute Mm -hmm. and start making that difference and connecting those dots for other people. Oh, mic freaking drop, right? That's so good. Okay, we still have an extended cut. We have five more questions. We're gonna dig a little bit deeper on the other side in our members lounge. But first, before we go there, can you tell everybody how they can find you, how they can connect with you and how our community can support you? Oh, absolutely. So you can find me on Instagram at Avro Creative Branding. I'm also on LinkedIn. You can check me out there. Just Google Kristen Dick or Avro and you'll you'll come up on my website or my uh, LinkedIn page. And you can support me by following along on my journey and commenting on my posts. I love it when people ask questions about personal branding. Uh, I'd love to be able to help answer those questions and create blogs and other content to Mm -hmm. address those concerns. So Kristen's got lots of awesome content that you can check in on. She also does uh, personal one-on-one coaching. And I yes. believe you've got a couple spots that are coming available this yeah. fall, maybe. Yeah. yeah, I've got a few spots left for, for the end of the year. So check those out. And if you're also looking for a really unique professional development or team building opportunity at your company, give me a call and uh, I'd love to do a workshop for you. Absolutely. Okay. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into personal brand with Kristen. Um, If you are a member, go log into your members lounge and check out the rest of this interview. And if you're not a member, get on the ACE class website, check out our membership page and find out all the awesome benefits that membership can offer you. We'll see you on the other side. Hello. Friends, okay, we're back. We are continuing our conversation on personal brand with Kristen Dick. And I want to talk about comparison. You work Mm -hmm. in personal branding. You're helping people find their voice, own their voice, you know, create this image for themselves. Mm -hmm. And on social media, comparison trap is a real thing. Mm -hmm. What do you advise the women that you work with? To ditch the trap. Ditch it? Just ditch it? <laughs> yeah. And just to, I just always remind them, you know, what people do present on social media is only a part of what you see every day, mm-hmm. but you, you have the opportunity to bring a little bit more personal things about yeah. you and your struggles, and people do want to see that. You know, people really, really connect with that. So comparison is the thief of joy, which I think mm-hmm. is what Brene Brown says. Um, just you've got to let it go. And yeah. That's, again, part of that owning who you are. Yeah. No one else can do you like you can. Mm -hmm. So drop the comparison yourself, let your true self shine. Yeah. And once you kind of start doing that and you adopt that mindset, you start to appreciate what everyone else is doing and cheering them on rather than comparing them to wherever you are in your journey. Mm -hmm. I find that's totally changed for me uh, over the past couple of years when you know, the rise of the influencer has happened and then there's this like white picket fence life and, you know, the Jillian Harris uh, perfectly curated. And I mean, like Jillian Harris is Jillian Harris. Love that. Yeah. But I really engage and really enjoy seeing people's realness as well. Um, And, uh, you know, I think comparing yourself to someone else's perfection, it's not even their real life. Exactly. Right? So it's nice to sprinkle little pieces of, you know, what's real. Mm -hmm. Is there, you know, like how far is too far of how much sharing? Yeah. It really depends on the person. I have some people that I work with that lay everything out on the table. And there's some people that like, 
how far do you want me to go with this? And you know, a little bit nervous. Mm -hmm. Like it, however far you want to, mm -hmm. however far you need to, mm -hmm. to, to tell the story that you feel that you need to tell yep. your why, yep. that kind of thing. So it's not something that you need to feel uncomfortable about. It's really looking at what do people need to know about you in order to trust you. And they don't need to know everything. Mm, you don't have to be all things to all people. So when we're talking especially about social, think of it as pillars or content areas. Right. So you don't want to be talking one day about this is what I ate for breakfast. Now I'm doing this. Now I'm you know going to talk to you about my travel, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. Like keep it fairly consistent at right. first. Yeah. Talk about three things. Right. One of them should be more personal to you. Mm -hmm. And then once people come to know you for those three things, then evolve. Like totally. people expect you to evolve. Your brand isn't a box that you're stuck right. in. People want to know how you're changing and how you're evolving. Then you can start layering on additional pieces right at yourself. So as an example, if you were in the health and wellness industry, you would talk about, um, you know, here's how I moved this week. This is the fitness I'm a part of. This is what I'm eating. And then, you know, here's how I like to, I don't know, a mindful practice or books I'm reading or something like yeah. that. Right. So those yeah. would be like three buckets there. Yeah. And then a more business or personal or more business or professional, um, you know, what would that look like? Like talking about, uh, your credentials or, mm -hmm. you know, I was at this awesome event, this networking event or this conference or things like that. So just like picking kind of three and sticking mm -hmm. to there. Yeah. That's a really great framework to, if you can kind of identify like here are three things that mm -hmm. I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you don't want to get too personal, then talk about a cause that's really personal mm -hmm. to you that aligns to your business. Yeah. That's another really great way of doing it. Yeah. Would you recommend, is that the same as like, you know, a corporation or a business and how they should be communicating their messages versus um, an individual? Mm -hmm. It's, same. it's pretty similar yeah. with a personal brand though. You have the opportunity to be talking about more things, right? I could talk about this for hours. I was just going to stick to my questions. Um, <laughs> so kind of back to that, you know, comparison, self, self doubt, but social media is definitely a big culprit that is leading towards this self doubt, mm -hmm. um, that we, you know, the comparison trap that we talked about, but there is, you know, an importance to leveraging that when it comes to personal brand. Yeah. Even if you aren't on an Instagram influencer, what are small things that everyone can be doing in regards to creating an online presence. Mm -hmm. So some really simple things like having your profile picture be a picture of yourself. Mm -hmm. Even if you have a business and your business is your name, or sorry, is not your name. Yeah. So my business is Avro and I'm very intentional about having my business not be my name. Yeah. Because I wanted to show other business owners that even if your business is whatever, not your name, you still need to have a personal brand and it's really, really powerful. So right. um, having your your uh, profile photo be you and also when you're scrolling uh, we've become so sophisticated on we're scrolling on our phones and we're we know when we're being sold to we're advertised to so when we see a logo in that little circle a lot of us are just like keep scrolling like it's an ad it's oh, a, probably a sponsored yeah. post whatever yeah. but when you see a face it's a human being you want to automatically engage and hear what they have to say interesting the other thing on social media is those introduction posts. Mm. Doing one regularly, whether it's at least once a quarter, uh, once a month is really, really good. Or if you have, um, say you did a contest or a big event or something and you have an influx of new followers, reintroduce yourself right then and there. Mm. And then things on Instagram, like Instagram stories, you have an opportunity to really show more of yourself. It doesn't have to be that pressure of this really polished, polished um, visual image. Totally. People want to see the human mm. in, in that space. And then the other thing too is um, your digital presence also includes your web, your web page. Right. So when you go to the about me section of your website, <laughs> it should, it should be probably about say about you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was on a call with a person a couple of weeks ago and she has a business that's named after her own, her, her named after herself. And she doesn't have pictures of herself on the website and the about page is about the company. People want to know about you. They want to know why you started this company. What, what makes you passionate about this stuff right. and a little bit about, you know, what your credentials are. Yeah, totally. So we've talked a lot about online, like social media, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, your bio on your website, all of that. Uh, but when building a personal brand, how does the online and the offline play together and what should we be doing offline? Mm 
Mm. You should be, you mentioned consistency earlier, so consistency is, is huge. Mm -hmm. So you, you automatically lose trust with somebody if you have this perception of them that you've seen, that have like curated their brand online and then you meet them in person and it's disjointed, trust is automatically broken. And it might just right. be in a little way, in a way that yeah. you're not even aware of. But what you want to do is give no uh, no reason for anyone to you mm -hmm. break trust. It's a uh, way to further build trust. So consistency is the way to do that. Mm -hmm. It's having a statement that you can say that works online and in person. Um, and it's understanding that you are the face of yourself and your company, and you are. Um, there's an expectation that you're that you can speak about it and that mm -hmm. you you know show the show the joy that you have mm -hmm. towards it. Absolutely. So this is my last question and it's really in regards to values because values play such a big role in how we build our yes. brands, our personal brand and how we talk about it. But tell me, you know, how do you tap into values? Mm -hmm. Like how do you support someone else to tap into values and, you know, really put that towards the foundation of building that brand? Mm -hmm. So the way that I do it with my clients is we have a huge list of all the, there's all these values, right? Mm -hmm. So I ask them what their values are and if they're struggling to answer them, show them this list. Yeah. And uh, I also begin by explaining the importance of having values mm -hmm. too and really clarifying them with yourself because mm -hmm. you're already making decisions based on your values. So knowing them and knowing them intimately and being really clear with yourself about them, it helps you make decisions faster. Mm -hmm. And even if that decision didn't end up working out for you and you look back and th thought, shoot, I did, I made a mistake there. Yeah. You're a lot less likely to regret it. If you, if you know that, you know what, I made that decision based on the information I had at the time and it was in conflict with my values. You're not going to regret that, right? Yeah, absolutely. You're a lot less likely to. So we look at this, we do this values exercise. And so once they've identified for themselves their top three values, then I ask them to ask other people in their lives. So at least three people. So it's sort of like a 360. And the really interesting thing is I don't ask them to limit the number of values that they ask people to um, say about them. But there's usually, almost always, congruence. So they might mm. use a different word to describe the value, mm. but it's still there. Interesting. And so you want to sh make sure that the way that you perceive your values internally, other people recognize them. Because totally. if there, there is that disparity, you would want to be able to adjust that. Oh, that's right so powerful. Mm -hmm. That's really powerful in probably building those stories as well. Yes. Those personal oh, yeah. stories. You want your yeah. story to be able to demonstrate your yeah. values. Because it's one thing to talk the talk about your values, but you want to be able to demonstrate them mm -hmm. through a story. Oh, so good. So good. These are amazing tips. I could talk to you for hours, so I know there'll be more. There'll be podcasts and workshops and all the things, but tell us again, ladies uh, that are tuning in, if you're looking to, you know, bring in a really interesting workshop for your team or work on your own personal brands, right? Mm -hmm. Kristen is here for you. Uh, where can we follow you? Where can we find you? Yeah. How do we support you? Yeah. So my website is abrocreative.com. I've got links to all my social channels on there. Uh, I'm I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I love talking about LinkedIn because it's the unsexy, uncool platform, but it gets results. It does. Um, yeah, so I'm on LinkedIn. Check me out on there. I'm at Avro Creative Branding on Instagram, and I would love to connect. Like we were saying earlier, I've got a few spots left for 2019. So if you want 2020 to be a big year for you, then let's talk. Yes, this is a it's, thank you for the work that you do. It's so powerful. Uh, this is something that's like personally impacted me in just like that imposter syndrome like replay over and over again for years and years and years and i'm glad that i now have a new statement personal brand statement not an elevator pitch that sounds like a lot more <laughs> just like just nicer just a breath, just of, nicer. Fresh just a breath of fresh air uh but truly once you can find confidence in just owning who you are and what you do it, it does really just change everything so really fun to talk to you today and thank you thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time thanks mandy and thanks for the ace class <laughs>